How are you doing guys? It's Big Mac Dance School here today. Uh, Happy New Year. I think it's my first, yeah, it's my first video of the year, isn't it? Um, yeah, this is my first video for Nick's New Year's Painting Challenge. So um, I've clipped everything I want off the sprue uh, for the Void Weaver. Um, but I'm not really going to talk about painting much today, despite the fact that it's Nick's New Year's Painting Challenge. Um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the, the excess stuff you get in the kit. Now, the Void Weaver kit, um, the Void Weaver and Star Weaver kit comes with um, three guys that you can uh, you can use as like a, I'll just bring the instructions into shot. So there's one guy here that you use on the Void Weaver as a gunner, and then turn the page, and then there's two guys you can mount on the back if you're using it as a, a Star Weaver. Um, you know, just to represent the passengers. Um, but because I'm using it as both a Void Weaver and a Star Weaver. Uh, I don't really need either of them guys. So, what I'm thinking, um, with these two guys, you get um, a Zephyr Glaive and um, Star Bowlers with them. So, um, I've got a conversion planned in the future um, involving some of the really old Harlequin jet bikes um, from GW mail order days. Uh, and I've got some Hellion um, Skyboards, Dark Helder Hellions. Um, that I'm going to pin onto the back of them, and these guys will be perfect for the riders of them. Uh, what will become Skyweaver jet bikes? Um, so yeah, one with a star ball and one with a Zephyr glaive. So that's kind of worked perfectly. And the other guy, so the guy from the Void Weaver, um, he's got like a, a long coat. Um, and if I give him the right sort of face mask, you've got a nice selection of masks to choose from here. I think he'd make a really good. Um, I've forgotten what they're called. I wanted to say Dark Reaper, but it's not a Dark Reaper. Uh, yeah, he'd make a really good Death Jester. Um, basically, I've just got to find a shuriken weapon for him to hold. And um, with an abundance of uh, kits I've got at hand at the minute, um, Eldar kits especially, um, I'm sure I can find a spare shuriken weapon for him to, for him to hold and use as his, um, his Shrieker Cannon. I couldn't think what they were called then. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, plans for the excess stuff in the kits, really. Um, I will talk a little bit about painting to you today. Um, bear with me. But before I talk about painting, I just want to talk about how easy it is to make the kit into a dual kit. So this on the back, I've not glued on. Um, you can just pull that straight out, and then that basically becomes a Star Weaver by just pulling this out of here. I've not magnetised this or anything. There we go, just pull that out of there. And then you can do the same on this one. It's a little tricky as some of the pieces are delicate. And I've not glued them onto the base yet, as you can see. But basically, they've just got a really simple slot where you can just pull the weapon out of. And that also means I can, um, I can have the haywire cannon. I think it's a haywire cannon, or the um, the option for the prismatic cannon. So you just, if I can get that in the light, basically you just slot that in there. It's a really simple connection, and I'm hoping when it's painted it'll make it nice and snug. It's a little snug at the minute anyway, so maybe I might need to file it down before I do so. Um, before, sorry, before I, uh, before I paint it, just so it's not quite so snug. And then you just slot that on there, um, if I can locate it right. There we go, and then that's basically, that's the Star Weaver now. Um, yeah, so I'll plunk that on the desk, and uh, I'll come back in a second. So, it being a New Year's painting challenge, you kind of have to make your mind up about how you want to paint your models before you paint them. Um, there's no mask where the fluff and the colour scheme jumps out to me um, at the moment in the um, Harlequin Codex. But um, one of the colour schemes that jumps out to me is this one. It's like a monochromatic, um, you know, with a few colours thrown in there, like a teals and reds, which I do quite like. Um, if you've seen my um, Nightly House, you know, you'll, you'll know it's grey with like teals and reds and stuff like that. Um, so I'm thinking um, of something like that. Um, some people think that's a bit plain for Harlequins, but I kind of like it. Um, and one thing I was thinking as well, um, I was just there... As I was building the kit last night, this Void Weaver kit, um, I was, for some reason, uh, I was positioning the head on the on the driver. I've not glued it in place yet. 
but I was positioning the head on the driver and I, I thought to myself, what would it look like if you turned the head to the side? Um, and then I got an image in my head of, um, I don't know if you've ever, if any of you out there have ever watched uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but there was these characters in it called the Gentleman. And there was this um, in the trailer for the episode um, with the Gentleman and the, the episode's called Hush. So if you Google Buffy the Vampire Slayer Hush or the Gentleman, um, you'll find uh, these gentlemen and they've got kind of like grinning faces kind of like this guy down here um, and I, I can't remember they think they take your heart or something like that these gentlemen come in and steal your heart or something uh, yeah so like really similar faces to this sort of thing um, and when I thought of him looking at the side to the side instead of straight forward I just thought of um, in the trailer to the gentleman episode uh, they kind of hover these gentlemen and they glide past so I kind of thought maybe if I positioned the head off to the side and then he sort of glides past like a really creepy um, sort of feel so that's that's uh, another little bit of inspiration they they wear like suits these gentlemen and they're, they've got really pallid skin tones um, so that kind of adds again to the like monochromatic um, look I want to go for um, let's fly through here and get to the masks near the near the back so this is the Mask of the Veil path. I don't like them. They're too colourful for me. A bit, bit green and... Uh, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of them. Um, in this picture, uh, the Midnight Sorrow look really like really cool, I think. Because um, they don't look too colourful. Um, but then the path of the Midnight Sorrow is the uh, this guy. Um, or the Mask of the Midnight Sorrow, sorry. It's, uh, you know, it's the main colour scheme they use in the book. And... Uh, it doesn't look as, as good when it's painted up in the flesh. Uh, the Frozen Stars, I like the name. And I, I you know, uh, I do like, that's the uh, that's the one that I do kind of like and I'm drawn to. Um, I'll add, I'll, you know, add a lot of diamonds and stripes and stuff. Well, I say I'll add a lot. It'll depend on how um, how frustrated I get with painting them. Um, but yeah, um, so probably something similar to, to the Frozen Stars colour scheme is what I'll be going for. Um, but choosing different colours and stuff on different models just to add that splash of colour that you expect with the Harlequins. Um, so that's what I'm thinking so far. Hopefully I'll get this, uh, you know, the Void Weaver undercoated and stuff in the next couple of days. Um, and I'll get another video up for you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I will see you on the battlefield.